Oh, <laughs> oh, he ugly. Hey, Scott, can you shut the f up? This is me digging on myself, not you laughing at me like I'm a. Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isretel here for Renaissance Periodization, and I'm also a professor of exercise and sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx in New York City, in New York State. I usually forget that one. In the United States, in the Western Hemisphere, on planet Earth, in the solar system, in the Orion arm of the Milky Way, and I believe I'm leveling up today in, I think, what's called like the local cluster of galaxies, but I think I fucked that up. Science people, tell me I'm an idiot. In any case, speaking of me being an idiot, it turns out I have an unbelievable qualification. I've been an idiot for a long time, and I've been training for a long time, 20 some odd years, and so Scott the Video Guy and I, we dug up my old training footage, lurking about in places and YouTube and even worse, and we're gonna critique the living crap out of it today, so time to slam dunk on myself. Let's kick it. All right, so I tell you guys a lot about this video. This is me squatting what I believe is a sum total of something like 529 pounds. I forget that is in kilos. I think I'm gonna hit it for four reps, if I believe that correctly. This is gonna be a high bar squat done not for hypertrophy of the quadriceps, but as Mikhail Kakleyev, a uh, famous Russian lifter, once said, для души, which is for the soul, for the soul. This is just me, I think I was like about maybe 27 years old or 26 years old, which means it's like 11 or 12 years ago. And I'm just trying to get really big and strong generally. I was recently not drug free here and I uh, was really feeling that swag. So let's find out how awful the technique is or maybe not. Yeah, you have to bark at weights that are sufficiently heavy. Now, as Scott's video guy is laughing his ass off, he thinks this is insane, and it is. Well, I'll tell you guys this, I don't do this kind of stuff anymore, generally, in the gym, because if I put this much emotional energy into something, my probability of uh, using the best mind-muscle connection falls precipitously. My probability of putting out an exceptional amount of effort rises in insanely, and so I can I can crank out way more weight and way more reps. My injury risk increases at the expense of targeting the muscle that I want. So now, as a competitive bodybuilder, and I wasn't back then, I have yet to do my first show. Um, I was just trying to get fucking big and strong and just just do ego shit, and I did, and I succeeded at it. But now that I no longer do that, I don't get the psyched up for lifting anymore. Was it fun to get the psyched up? Oh my god, yes. None of this is fake. I don't fake bark at the weights. Like, I was so inspired to go hard that the bark just comes out. Um, you're just, you know, hashtag going to war, brother. But these are all genuine heartfelt emotions. Nothing for the gram. There was no gram back then. What were we doing with our lives? Mm -hmm. Good setup. A little smack talk. Why is my face so fat and round? Because the rest of me was also fatter and rounder. Hey, Scott, can you shut the f up? This is me digging on myself, not you laughing at me like I'm a... Anyway, it's like back to middle school again. Everyone laughing at me. I was gross. All right. All right, all right. You'll see me looking down at my feet. My walk back was uh, something that requires a lot of thought. Um, and so I'm I'm super amped up with psychic energy uh, and inspiration and rage, um, positive rage eh, for the planet. I'm still trying to be technical in the setup. Once the setup occurs, it's just hope the body does the right thing, go deep, come back up. That's it. Well, it's one rep. Good depth. You guys can see that my gut is basically spilling over my belt. Now, this is a strategy of very high level, so please stay with me. This is 8D chess. Become fat enough to look grotesque. Have such a difficult time interacting with women that you are overloaded at all times in the game and actually how to talk to girls and pick them up, so much so that you, you don't talk to anyone and you don't actually get better at the game and, and you stay dry for years on end. It worked. All right, back to the lifting. I'd say a pretty good pace. You guys will notice I'm dipping and bouncing a little bit out of the hole. In an athletic weightlifting technique, high bar squat, that's how you squat. 
this is effective for hypertrophy. It's very effective for strength. If I was critiquing this from the perspective of maximizing hypertrophy, I would first of all not do a set of four, which was what I'm doing here, I believe. And also, um, I would pause or at least slow down the eccentric significantly to be able to use less weight on the bar, but have as much total time over tension imposed on the muscles in a position that is safer and marginally more effective. If I saw someone in the gym lifting like this, but yeah, that's really good. But if they were like, hey, do you have any tips on how to maximize this lift for hypertrophy over the long term with safety included? I'd be like, oh, oh God, yeah, thank God you asked. Here's like eight tips, right? One of them would be to stay even more upright, push the knees forward more. That does not allow you to use the glutes and the hips as much as typically I would in this situation. And thus it lowers the amount of weight you can lift, but it shifts more of the weight to your quads. So if you're squatting for big legs, you actually squat in a way it's super, super upright with your knees going really far over your toes. So long as your heels are down, you control the eccentric significantly more, pause at the bottom and then come back up. And what that allows you to do is to maximize the squat from the perspective of stimulating quad growth. But it does come at a trade-off of squatting as much weight as you possibly could. There are many, many people in the gym, there's nothing wrong with this, that go in the gym to get bigger and stronger at the same time. This kind of technique is perfect for that. If you just wanted to get stronger, you would do low bar squats. I would shift the weight down on my back. If I just wanted to get bigger, then I would do the squat as I just described to you. Knees forward more, much more upright, slower on the way down, and a nice pause at the bottom. But generally here, the range of motion is quite good. There is no avoiding hard training if you wanna grow. But if you wanna grow the most, your training needs to be hard and smart. RP Hypertrophy app will make sure you're progressing on track monitoring and adjusting your workout at all times. So for all that work you're doing, you can be sure you're getting the best results. Oh yeah. <laughs> so this is me actually at a gym called Boss Barbell, which I think still exists. Um, I used to be quite good friends with uh, Mr. Dan Green, who is Dan Green and one of the greatest lifters of all time and beyond jacked. Um, and so you guys can see that I'm a few things. I weigh so roughly 245 pounds here, but much fatter than I am today at that same body weight. And um, I am going to be underhand rowing, I think like 300 pounds or something for 10. You notice it's the easy bar, which I highly recommend for underhand rows. I used to do them all the time. Then I actually got too big to be able to grab an easy bar anymore and get a stretch at the bottom. So I stopped doing them for a long time. You also notice that I'm in flip-flops. All serious Eastern European lifters can lift in flip-flops. This is a known thing. And uh, I'm on two wooden blocks and that's to extend the range of motion and get a big stretch at the bottom. So I think my technique here is pretty good. Big chest before movement, big breath in, straight back, pretty good. Touch the gut. Some people will say, but Mike, you're not touching your torso. Yeah, sure, shit am. My gut just sticks out so much, I don't have that far to move. Making this lift less impressive than it would otherwise be. You'll notice I'm looking up and forward the entire time to keep my back straight. Good stretch at the bottom, touching the ground every time. Uh, I would like to see a slower eccentric, uh, uh, ideally for hypertrophy, but this isn't terrible the person doing it is ugly. That receding hairline situation is pretty dope. That tells me like, uh, this is an older person and he doesn't have a lot of hope left, which was true at the time. Big chest, not terrible, not terrible at all. A little body English towards the last few reps. Not ideal, not the end of the world for sure. I wouldn't do that today, but I don't hate it. Oh, and that's an old school RP shirt I'm wearing. The original logo, can't get that anymore. I just don't sell it. Aha. Uh -huh. This was when I was a personal trainer in New York City right around 2009. I think it was about uh, 23, 24, 25 years old. That's, I believe, Mr. Nick Shaw spotting me. This is back when Nick and I were both trainers in New York. This is pre-RP. In that gym, which is now known as, I think, Complete Body and Fitness or something on 19th Street in New York City in Manhattan, that gym used to be called back then 19th Street, or as we called it, because all the other members called it 19th. No way, 19th. Everyone was more street than we were, so we felt a little bit like vanilla, but it was dope. So this is um, uh, lifetime drug-free, close grip bench, 275 pounds. I believe I did this for like close to 20 reps or something like that. Let's see the technique. I was so fat. Look at how fat I am. 250 pounds, uh, something like that. Big ass gut. I am doing an arch and retraction. I can't bench this close anymore with an arch and retraction because I've just straight up gotten too big for it. 
and let's see how it goes. All right, so a couple things you can notice. One is the speed with which my Concentra goes on 275. Like I'm just strong, let's cut me a little bit of slack. The eccentric control is almost non-existent and I am bouncing off my chest a little bit. Is that ideal? Absolutely not. If I saw this, I'd be like, hey, that's really impressive. And old me would be like, thanks. I'd be like, do you want to learn how to lift better? I'd be like, yes. Take those 25s off, mother Full lockouts. A lot of people will bench in an arc. I actually prefer with an arch to bench in a straight line. That's where I feel best. Yep, you'll notice that I'm not very stable with regard to the bench and the floor. I should have been wedging my feet better. That would have gotten me a better result. And no, I'm actually not using any hip drive. Uh, I never did use a lot of leg drive. Oof, that was it. So the reason I racked that was because for me, when the bench starts slowing down a lot, I'm sufficiently fast twitch in my chest and triceps that it, if I start slowing down, I'm not getting another rep. Hey, original RP logo. Love it. Oh yes. This is 275 pounds for eight reps in the exercise science laboratory at the University of Central Missouri, where I was a professor at the time. And uh, this is with actually a deadlift bar. I preferred, I purchased that bar for the gym and I preferred to overhead press with a skinny bar because it let me get a little bit closer to my face and actually feels a little better in my hands. And I have very small hands uh, and genitals. This was the absolute peak of my overhead pressing strength. I weighed about 240 pounds in this video, 242 or so. And I did this uh, 275 pounds for eight reps. And I pretty much have no critiques here, I don't think, because these were clean reps. So you'll notice that I'm pressing up and back. I'm really rocking my head and chest back and up and then down and forward at the top. That's how you do a proper standing barbell press. And like, as I was doing these reps, I was like, wow, I'm still doing these reps. This is crazy. Voila. Sweet. Oh yeah. <laughs> Classic. Look, this is a good look. This is what happens when genetic engineers try to raise a human in a lab and they successfully raise the body into adulthood, but the face and head stay a babies, an ugly babies. So baby head Mike is gonna squat 405 pounds for 14 repetitions. I think it was gonna be 15, but I just miscounted. That's the real truth. This is um, from a gym in uh, that was close to Appalachian State University where I did my master's program. So I was uh, about 22, 23 years old in this video and uh, drug-free, lifetime drug-free at that point and weighing about 240 pounds or something like that. Nice and fat. Oh, nice. Nice, Scott, did you throw that in? You, you yes. son of a bitch. <laughs> fat Bjork. I mean, Bjork looks a lot better than I do. Yeah, that the skull is similar, but the fat cheeks, I got that bitch all fucking day. <laughs> all right, if you like that, we have way more of it. Ugh, how much more can we make? in the member section. So give a thought to signing up and you can see the extended, unfiltered, raw edition. Enjoy. Oh, oh, he ugly. You know, interestingly enough, I didn't feel ugly. I felt just fine. I always had a certain amount of not giving a fuck about how I looked, I guess. So that's nice. All right, so you can see me mouthing Russian swear words at the bar. I really like to have a disdain for the bar. Like, I like to pretend that, uh, not an elaborate pretend, just a very surface level of like, well, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of my face, bar. What the fuck do you know? You know, like a real like disdain for it. And I think that that's helpful in those contexts. Atta, baby, come on. All right, nice high bar setup. Big gut hanging through. Notice I had some sizable quads back then. Okay, so you notice very exaggerated hip tilt coming back. I don't do that much anymore. Again, that was to get a lot of power out of the hips, sit back and down. If I was hypertrophy squatting, I would have my chest up higher. I would have my knees go forward. I would go much slower on the eccentric and take a pause. You'll notice I'm bouncing out of the hole each time. It's not dangerous, it's not terrible. It's just a very athletic kind of weightlifting style squat. You see weightlifter squatting in the back room, usually it looks something like that. Right. employing rest pause, 
So uh, I was very comfortable with 400 pounds on my back. I could rest with 400 pounds on my back if I locked my hips and knees out. So I'll do a couple reps. And then when they slow down, I'll rest and breathe. I think this is a good strategy for anyone that wants to do a lot of reps in the squat. You'll notice that slight hip tilt forward at the beginning of, of uh, some of the reps to make sure that I know which way forward is so I can come back from it. Chest upright. Notice when I get in trouble, and this is a good cue for you guys to use, if you're getting in trouble in the squat, look up into the sky. As long as you're at least a third of the way up, when you get into the sticking point, look up and it's gonna maximize your activation of your entire posterior chain, fire your glutes and your lower back for you so that you have a much higher probability of actually standing up with the weight. I see people come three quarters, two thirds up uh, out of a squat looking down and they'll miss the weight. And I'm like, dude, you just look up and you'll have an extra 15, 20 pounds, no problem. So you'll notice I'm using that here with all of these final reps. At this point, I'm out of breath. I was in excellent cardio shape, if you can't tell. Yeah, a Russian yelling. Uh, and I was very proud of myself for doing this. So I, I had a really great time. This was a very fun moment. I was actually laughing because I'm like, holy shit, I'm the man. Yeah, this gym full of people. But here's the thing is like, this was a multiple times a day occurrence of people lifting. My weights weren't even that insane. People lifting way heavier weights, screaming way more, throwing stuff. That was just the atmosphere. It was a truly hardcore gym. So everyone there was kind of like, well, it's just Mike doing his thing. Great times with friends. This is me doing pull-ups, weighing 265 pounds with, I think, 25 pounds in the belt. So 295 pounds of total tension. Um, let's see how many pull-ups I get. And the, I'm gonna critique the living f out of my technique here. Look at that gut. It's nowhere, no one's had ever had a bigger gut and love handles than me, I maintain. A little kip, full range chin over the bar. I, I need, if I was not an idiot at the time, I would have greatly slowed down my eccentric on the way down. Would have to do that. That would be a really good idea. But other than that, I don't, I guess I, I don't uh, have a ton of hate for these pull-ups. Now, okay. So I weighed 265 back then and I was a fat f and not nearly as muscular. And I was still doing full range of motion pull-ups where I think I get these for like, you know, like five to eight reps or something like that. And you could ask the question of like, Mike, but I see you doing pull-ups now and you might have a 25 pound on, but you only weigh 250 or 240 or 230. You might even have no weight on and you're doing kind of a similar number of reps. Did you just like get weaker on pull-ups? Here's the thing. There is a humongous difference in how many pull-ups you can do based on how your technique looks. If you kip with your feet, it adds amount of force that you can exert on the bar. If you go quickly down on the eccentric, it, save, it saves a ton of reps for you. Just slowing down the eccentric, the descent phase, is a humongous, humongous, humongous difference in how many pull-ups you can actually do. So I'm way stronger, my lats are way bigger now, but I can't do as many pull-ups with as much body weight because my technique is so different. Even subtle differences in technique have a huge effect on how much weight you're lifting. And the purpose of hypertrophy training is to, that to get the technique so dialed in that you don't need to use as big of weights as you normally would to get the same effect. That radically reduces fatigue, it radically reduces injury risk probability, and it makes everything better, except it's less impressive externally. Mike, there's a girl up there that'll have sex with you. Look at me go. There wasn't. No sex was had. I mean, how do you have sex with a gut that big? I don't know. I never had any sex when my gut was that big. And this was roughly, I think, like a year into using performance enhancing substances. You wore shoes that tied back then. I wore some shoes that tied, and then I discovered that I um, have feet that are basically pointed like this, and I wear out only the outsides of my soles on shoes of soles, and then they get incrementally shittier, so that like there's this wedge that keeps me even more out this way. I realized after this couple year period that I need to just wear flat shoes and they don't have that problem. And that's why I started wearing my, my flat autism shoes. All right, time to rate myself. Technique, eight out of 10. Psychology, nine out of 10. Getting laid, 25 out of 10. Cause your boy was swimming in the shit, coming up for air every now and again in my dreams. And in reality, I was hopeless and alone. I had no one to talk to, which is still the case. See you guys next time.
Unfortunately, Lamborghinis are not free and I would like to buy more of them and we get paid when you guys watch more YouTube videos. So if you watch this video right here, you'll make me incrementally more rich.